Okay, well, welcome to Family Matters um, for the, our second one ever. Uh, today we have um, Alvin and Cindy Brown as our special guests, and we're going to be talking about raising teenagers. So a pretty exciting topic, one of those topics that sort of everyone seems interested in. Um, what goes on in a teenager's head and what does a parent do about it? Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to start off with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to be able to be together and to be able to discuss um, how to raise teenagers today. And we know that's a really important question, Lord. And we pray that you would help us to um, to ask the right questions and to to be wise in the answers that we give and pray that you would give us understanding hearts and help us to seek your advice for bringing up children. Help us to be able to bring up godly families so that we can honour you and that they will all come to know and to love you with all their hearts. We ask this and give you our thanks through Jesus Christ. Amen. Right, so um should just turn that on. So yeah, welcome to Elvin and Cindy. Elvin and Cindy Brown from Invercargill, all the way from the deep south. We're up in Auckland. I'm Robert and this is my wife Sharon. Um, just in case any of you don't know us. Um Elvin and Cindy uh have uh six children um who have either been through or are currently still in their teenage years so they're well qualified to talk about teenage experience um Elvin was just saying to us that uh five of them are girls and one is a boy that sort of that adds up to six so that's that's sort of good um yeah and so there's way too much emotion in his family he reckons uh three of the children are married and three others are in relationships so they've uh, had a lot of experience there as well. They have 5.8 grandchildren. You can explain that later if you like. And um, Cindy's, Cindy has an amazing hobby, and her hobby is to collect teenagers and young adults. And so right now they have eight young people at home with them. So uh, welcome to Cindy and Alvin. Good to have you here. Thanks for that. Yes, we've got a pretty big bubble at the moment, that's for sure. Although uh, that sort of thing's just um, been relaxed somewhat. But um, at the moment, we've managed to shoo all of the teenagers out of um, the room here because um, we might have to talk about some of them a bit later on, you know. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so, yeah, it, it's good to be here, Robert. It really is. Uh, pretty good summation. Thanks. Cool. Oh, anything else you want to add to that? Oh, well, over the last. <laughs> Four, five weeks is it? Five weeks. We've um, had a pretty interesting time overall. Um, it's been um, not so hard, I guess, with us because um, uh, our bubble's reasonably big. It expands over a couple of different um, places. So we often go over to Sam and that's. We've got a wee bit of land over there and um, we've got some horses there. So consequently, the, um, the teenagers and the kids can, um, uh, you know, go between the places and there's, there's, there's things to do. It would have been a lot more difficult if we were all shut up at home. So, so just yeah. in passing, three of the six teenagers or six young people we have in the house, there's three relationships amongst that um, the eight we've got. So three relationships. Um, and that keeps us busy as well. We'll keep <laughs> us busy. Absolutely. Yeah. We'll, come, we'll come back to that later. In the meantime, what's it like? to have had six children with six different personalities. Like, how did you adapt for each one of them? Well, I that, that's actually six quite... different personalities. We've got four and they've got, and we, we, I didn't know you could have four opposites, but you can. Well, <laughs> but you've got six. Yeah, it's true. I, I can tell you we've almost got six. We've only got the oldest and the youngest. And I see Samantha's um, watching on at the moment, but Samantha and Jenny are probably um, reasonably close in personality. But the rest are as different as chalk and cheese. And it's been a really interesting task um, because you have to um, adjust your style somewhat. And Cindy's a bit of an expert in that. So uh. you do have to balance them. You have to balance them out quite a bit. Um, uh, we have two that are extremely competitive. So we have to try and balance them out. We have one that's more inclined to take offence at things. So you have to make sure that you can 
handle that as well. And uh, the, the oldest and the youngest were probably the more easygoing of them. Um, and one's just a dreamer. She just dreams away her life quite happily. <laughs> the dream is very easy. Yeah, the dream did not teenage ship at all. We have never had to worry about that. She explodes every now and then, but most of the time she just gets on with life and does whatever's needed to be done. So she's been our easiest child, really. Hmm. So just taking a step back, um, when we were chatting with the other the other night, we were talking about how the the, pre, the parenting um, part really starts back in the preteen years. So to have adapted and um, balanced teen years, when you need to start with your parenting skills way back preteen. So you want to talk us a bit a little bit through that? Yeah, sure. Um, what you're saying is exactly right. As I said, as you said, that's what we talked about. But right from an early stage to us anyway, and what seems to have worked for us pretty well is um, we set, you know, reasonable boundaries on the kids. They they know pretty much what what they could do and what they couldn't. And we also made um, the meeting very much a part of our lives. So um, if you want to bring your kids uh, up, you know, to love God, then you have to show that God's important in your own life, you, you know what I mean? Mm, and yeah. and so we attended, you know, attendance to meetings in Bible classes and Bible camps and things, which we'll talk about a bit about later on, it was very important, wouldn't you say? Yeah, so the very first thing you've got to have is boundaries at a very young age. And if your children have got boundaries that you can, they'll bounce against all the time, but you've got to try and maintain those boundaries and they start to grow and you give them a bit more, more as they get older. But through that, you're also asking them to respect you. You want them to respect you because it's the respect they have for you and the respect they have for God that's going to carry them through the difficult teenage years. So the more respect they have for you and the more respect they have for God, the less likely they are to stray completely, hopefully. I mean, you can't guarantee anything, mm -hmm. but that's what you're aiming for. So they don't want to go off the rails because they respect mum and dad and they respect God and so they don't want to look bad. They don't want to do the wrong thing. So it's that respect that's going to carry you right through. And that starts from a very young age, the boundaries and working on the love and respect. And that's not where you're harsh or you're making things too hard for them, but neither are you too easy so that they don't have any boundaries at all. You've got to have that, that balance. So that's what's, what's worked what, for us. Yeah, so, so say you've got 10-year-olds and you've got lots of girls. So say you've got 10-year-old girls, what sort of boundaries would you would you what, what what sort of boundaries would you place for a ten year old girl? You know, as you oh. as you're heading into those teenage years, you know, you're heading into all the changes from ten years old. Um, for me, a lot of it would be around respect. I think for um, listening to you, being a part of the family, doing the chores that they need to do, starting to advance into more things that they can do to help around the family, but all the way through, hopefully, um, working on how they talk to you and how they act around you so that they're they listening to you and they're respecting what you're saying. And you will always have bouncing against that. They're always going to push at you to not do that, but you've got to try and maintain that respect. You aren't going to be their friend. You're going to be their mum and their dad. Yep. And that's mm. what you need to maintain. One of our daughters, <clears throat> the one we were talking about that, um, um, uh, yeah, she, you know, she was, uh, could be a bit interesting at times. Um, she would, for example, if she wanted to get my attention and I was doing something, she said, Dad, 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 Elvin. And I'm not Elvin, I'm Dad. <laughs> so she, she knew how to um, get my attention and, and, you know, push boundaries sort of thing, you know. And on another yeah. level of that, it was interesting today, I was actually having a conversation with Samantha's midwife because I happened to be over at Samantha's place when her midwife arrived. And she's got a 14 and a half year old. And um, she says, I can't get her to do anything. I can't get her to listen. She just does whatever she wants. And my problem is that John, that's her husband, is not on the same page with her. And this is absolutely crucial. You have to be on the same page as parents. I mean, you're not always going to agree. And sometimes you might have arguments about how you're going to end up dealing with the children. But overall, you have to be on the same page with your expectations. And because she wasn't, she had no control of her child. Her child just went to dad. Go to dad, yeah. Yeah, they play yeah. one off against another. So it's, so it's really crucial. So it's really crucial as a husband and wife, or as a father and mother, to 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 have those same values and those same principles for building up building your kids' lives, 
so that you're on the same page and to be communicating and and loving each other so that your kids can't force their way in between and, and split you apart really then, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, very strong. And, and if they know, you know, they can get something out of dad that they won't get out of mum, trust me, they'll try dad. So e even if I yeah, don't yeah. always agree with um, what Cindy does or more to the point, Cindy doesn't agree to what I do, um, somewhere along the line, I'm sure that, um, you know, you, you back up your... There was something that you said just before, I think it was uh, Robert, about um, communication. And so we've talked about boundaries, about respect. Yeah. Part of that young years is actually communicating with your children. It's getting that conversation going all the time. Talk them through things. In the earlier years, you're going to say you do it or else, or you, you know, you however you're going to do it in the early years. But over time, you want to discuss more with them why they do something, why you want them to do something, and what they should be doing. And so you keep that communication all the time, so that. Over time, they'll come to you with their issues or their problems. And I was thinking about it the other day when I was talking to you. I still remember um, when Richard was at home, our only son, and he was, you know, 15 and 16 years old, 17 and 18 even, and he would sometimes just knock on the bedroom door and walk in and waltz in and, and sit on the floor and chat for an hour or two. And that often happened in our lives. He would just walk in. The girls would do it automatically. It's kind of expected with the girls. But to have it with the, the 16, 17-year-old boy was really quite precious. Really enjoyed that. Yeah, yeah. And there, there's actually another thing. Sorry, Robert, if I can just add to that. Yeah, go for it. Uh, when you have conversations um, with your kids, quite often um, it, it's fair to say that if you sit somebody down and say, right, I'm going to have a talk with you, blah, 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 the conversation was much. Um, today I went for a bike ride with, with Jen, and uh, Jenny's my youngest. She's um, 18 years old. And um, we, we rode for 40 k's as, as I get older, you know, my chest slipped a wee bit and I'm getting the hard work from the doctor because my blood pressure's up a wee bit. So biking seems to be the way to go. So we went for a 40k ride today and she chatted all the way around. She, she, I haven't had such a good conversation with her for probably weeks, you know. So yep. if, if you get an opposite, uh, you know, we talked about a, you know, a trip in the car or something like that, uh, you know, something where you can keep your eyes on the road or something like that and they can just – it's. I'm having a father-daughter conversation with you, or whatever. It's it's just like a, it's just a chat. It's just a chat, and it works chat, really, yeah. really well. So you're not sitting across the table from each other, eye to eye, but you're sitting beside each other, doing something together. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Amongst the best chats, yeah, yeah. So we're talking about um, building relationships between the parents and the children. So what are what are some more keys that you would suggest for for building strong relationships, what does it even look like? Well, it's got to be based on trust and respect, I think it'd be fair to say. Um, you know, you want them to trust you. You've got to show that you trust them as well. And, and respect goes two ways as well, but you're still dad and mum, you know what I mean? Um, it's, it's the communication. Building the strong relationship with them is when when it comes to a point where um, later on in life where they get a partner, like we've got here, um, they have we've built yep. the communication enough for them to know that there are certain things that they should do that will help them to get through these that, those months before they get married. Um, when they've got problems at school, you're you're talking to them about their problems at school, but you're understanding why they have problems. You, you draw back on when you were a child, which might seem like last century to them, but you can remember what it was like. It was last century. And um, yeah, it was like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's um, my opinion, actually. <laughs> um, you, you, you draw Brilliant. on that, and you and you remember what it was like for you, and don't brush off their concerns, so that you can build on that relationship, and you can understand they can understand it. You understand yeah. how they feel. If your son or daughter feels they can come up and chat with you about things that makes things a hang of a lot easier what i will yeah. say and i see sammy my oldest daughter who's now 30 years old actually i don't know if i should have said that now i'm probably in trouble <laughs> but um one of the good things is that now that she's a bit older as well the girls will often go and even richard will often go and and, and sometimes open up to sam as well and that's 
that's a really good thing. We, well, I, I think that that's that's quite a special thing to be able to have as well. But of course, that only applies, you know, when you've got older uh, children. But if you have somebody else within the meeting or something like that, that they feel comfortable with, that that can be quite useful as well. Yeah. But then that whole, I mean, she's 30 now, but that whole training ground happened when she was, between when she was 10 and when she was 20, whatever it was, when she got married. So, you know, that whole training ground was, was what was happening inside your house. That, that right. blew her to become that woman that can be a listening ear for someone else. So yeah, that's really awesome. So yeah. that, that was led me on to something which we hadn't actually discussed the other day. And that was about sibling rivalry or sibling arguments, which, of course, are going to happen all the time, and mm. especially in their teenage years because in teenage years you're often a little bit competing with each other. Um, somebody might have a boyfriend the other, or a girlfriend the other one might not, and, and so there's a little bit of competition going on. And um, we found that, you know, you have to actually talk. So the early years you could – I was thinking about it and I was talking to Samantha about it. So she says it was before they were teens, but, I mean, I remember making them sit down and hold hands and sing You Are My Sunshine which was very interesting because I read in a book in a Christian bookstore later on that you never sit your children down and make them hold hands and sing You Are My Sunshine, which is kind of freaky. But um, <laughs> the, uh, time, when Richard and Kelly were being very naughty, they uh, uh, this is when they were younger, I ha was driving to Gore and um, they were just fighting. I wasn't there. No, he wasn't there. And in the end, I put them out of the car, made them hold hands, and I drove the car for a kilometre and they had to walk in front of the car uh, on the side <laughs> of the road. And every time they dropped hands, I beat the horn at them till they did it. This is the highway one for crying out loud. Let's <laughs> try and get them to do that. But actually, in the end, what we did was we spent a lot of time getting the kids to talk to each other and, and be friends with each other, which helped because we were homeschooling. But they um they spent a lot of time talking to each other. And if one of them was fighting with the other, often we would sit and say, you've got to understand how your sibling is. And I still do that today with, the, with them. You've got to understand what they're going through. You've got to think about why they may be and give them a bit of slack because they're going through a few issues right now that are, are, are troublesome for them and get them to think, think the outcome of that talking to them is that uh, in all three marriages so far, they had largely their siblings as their uh, bridal party. And I know with the younger ones, it'll be very similar. In fact, one of my daughters said the other day, she said, you can have friends, friends come and go, but my siblings are going to be there forever. And that's who she wants in her wedding party. Yeah. Yeah. That's so really siblings good. are very, very close. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's fantastic. So oh, that's good. Yeah. So just going back a, a step, um, what's we, we talked about boundaries and things before and things you do around the house, and you mentioned chores, Cindy. How do you go, um, or what's the balance between getting teens to work around the house and allowing them to do their own thing? Because that could be, like, you know, some teens just want to sit in their room. Other teens want to, you know, are, are really willing to help. But, um, yeah, and, and often, but often there's that sort of like, oh, do I have to, you know? When, so what's when the, the kids balance? Were, um when the kids were early teens, again, because I homeschooled them, they had um, jobs every day that they each had to do and they had turnabouts. So one would do the lounge, one would do the kitchen, one would do the corridor, one would do the bathroom, so and then the next week they'd turn around. That doesn't always work exceptionally well because if they left it for that week, the next one would get double load. So, you know, you, you had to sort of balance things all the time on that. Um, we introduced things like them cooking meals. Even Richard was required <clears throat> to do some some cooking. Um, change, change the order around. Uh, the yep. chores as well, so there would be a bit of variety there. Yeah, you, know? you change the order yep. at times too. But it's it's really getting them to contribute to the family where mum isn't having to do everything um, and that they learn what they've got to do later on when they've got to start their own family. So um, it's it, you've got to balance that with schoolwork and their own free time. If you're asking them too much, they'll let you know. If you're not asking them enough, then, you know, if they're, they're fighting in their bedrooms or being stupid, then you say, right, well, I've got a job for you. <laughs> and Get that works. Really does work. Um, it works. We, yeah. Almost as effective as holding hands and walking down the road. <laughs> <laughs> we, we've got quite a number of teenagers in the house at the moment, and we had a um, um, oh, I suppose what, but over the last month we have had to introduce jobs and um, rosters because um, 
you know, you, you quite often we would have a um, uh, say the dog would rip into the rug rubbish or something like that, and then the boys who live in the cottage out the back would sort of walk past it, you know, and be there the next day, mm -hmm. and um, you know, feel like shouldn't have to put the hard word on them. So effectively, we, we, we've just rostered them now. So um, and it works. Be, don't don't be afraid to change your rosters. So I started off with these are going to do this job and these are going to do this job but because they're doing school and they're doing work and they're doing various other things that didn't work so then i tried doing if everybody contributes for half an hour in the house that's fine just half an hour but half an hour is not half an hour for the teenagers 10 minutes is more than enough so in the end what i did was i said okay i'm going to divide the family eight of you up into two groups and three groups one group of three another group of three and another group of two and after every meal you take your turn at doing the dishes and i found that's worked out exceptionally well they get in the kitchen they do the dishes, they laugh, they carry on, they, they work away together and they know they don't have to do it for three more days. And that's a huge help to the family. And sometimes the girls will be cooking the tea and the boys will be doing the dishes. So they choose dishes um, for, for dinner, you know, to create mountains. I think on that night they used every dish in the, in the, in the cupboard. Yeah. Just to annoy them. <laughs> but our, our, girls, um, our girls will do uh, cooking. The boys will at times. The boys cooked us on, on lockdown. We had oh, we were very fortunate on lockdown. We had um, Eden and, and uh, Rosie did a, a wonderful um, progressive dinner for us. Uh, it was just awesome. So yeah. we started in the garage and went to the, the kitchen, uh, dining and then um, the hallway and then the lounge, finished up in the lounge with four courses and games in between. And then Rosie and Rhiannon the following week did a, a, um, Passover. a Passover meal for us. Passover. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the week after that, myself and uh, um, three of the girls did a, a curry night. So we did an Indian night. And um, and the boys did a burger night one night. So we've been very fortunate. We just wrote them in and say, and this, I was talking to this uh, midwife about it today. She says, I, I wanted my daughter to do a meal. So I've said, you've got to do a meal in the next two weeks. She said, it won't work. You say, Thursday night is your night. You do Thursday night. You figure out what you need to make. You figure out your recipe. I'll make sure you've got the ingredients and then you can do cooking on that night. And that's what we do. They write on the fridge what they need for ingredients and uh, we get the ingredients when we're doing the shopping, um, which is Danielle at this case because she's working at Pack and Save. She does the shopping every day or every second day. And um, <laughs> and they uh, and they know what night they're doing the dinner. So tonight Jenny made, uh, she made um, fettuccine, shrimp fettuccine. Tomorrow night I think Rihanna's booked in for ribs. And the next night um, is Alvin's birthday and he's asked for a curry. So I think mm. I'm on that one. Awesome. Yeah. So you, essentially what you've done is you've made um, family chores sound like fun. I mean, it actually okay. said, I mean, I almost feel like going down there just to do the, do the dishes because it, <laughs> <laughs> it well, sounds like the fact, fun. The, the fact is they actually get on they do quite well when they're, when they're working together and interacting, you know, even if it's around the dishes. Um, but they still actually have fun and they chat and you hear a lot of laughter and stuff like that. And, and that's because they, they, they get on really, really well. Um, I, I think we mentioned, I hope I'm not jumping the gun here, uh, we don't encourage a lot of uh, our teenagers or our, or our kids for that matter uh, when they were younger to do a lot in their bedrooms. Like we prefer to have them out here. So, for example, at the moment, teenage nights um, when they're out here, you're often playing cards or um, – uh, putting together a board game or something like that, or if, if you know, for example, Rosie and Eden want to be together and spend a bit of time, they'll be over at the table putting together a jigsaw or something along those lines, you know. But again, we we do see a lot of laughter, a lot of fun, and a lot of interaction, and and that sort of thing helps. And we've been fortunate; I mean, no yeah. arguments in the last four weeks, really yeah. at all. The um, kids spent very little time in their bedrooms. Um, that's been something that I've both Alvin and I strongly encourage that we don't really want them spending too much time in their bedrooms. So they has a, as a tendency, they do their studying somewhere in, in the lounge room area, um, which is quite good. So they're, they're somewhere around. Um, when uh, you were going to ask, uh, you were talking about uh, relationships before, because we've got three sets of yeah. couples in the house. Well, Eden's in his own house, but he visits regularly. Um, extended bubble. Yeah, extended bubble. So we we make the rule right from the beginning that no boys and girls' bedrooms and vice versa which has um, meant that they have to kind of be somewhere nearby. And, and a couple of times we've had to lean on, well, I've had to lean on um, certain... Yeah, not, not really amongst this lot. No, not amongst this lot, but mm. 
previous, you know. Yeah. Previous times, so, yeah. 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 There's been occasions, but mostly they're pretty good. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I need, I need so, Nat. Nat didn't want to um, actually, he was not supposed to go in Samantha's bedroom or anything, but that was fine. But he fell through the roof just outside her bedroom, which was a bit suspicious. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> One leg either okay. side of a pearl and a bird. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised I've got grandkids. So, so just just working on that relationships thing because that's quite an important one. How, do, apart from staying outside your bedroom, you know, that, well, not not no boys and girls bedrooms. Um, any other idea uh, uh, thoughts on um, navigating relationships with teams? Again, it comes back to your earlier preparation. <laughs> Trust your earlier preparation has to be one that builds on on boundaries and respect, and then um, trust. Yeah. So I don't, we don't make a lot of rules. We don't run around checking after our children all the time, but they know that we can walk in their bedroom at any time. We'll just walk in basically, just maybe not walk in or not just walk in, they'll know we're coming in. And so they, there's a lot of trust involved here and um, and not a lot of checking. We don't run around and say, you've got to show us your phone, you've got to show us your this or that, but we will talk to them about music, for example, and say, are you sure you're listening to the right music for the right reasons? Um, you need to probably check your music list and make sure you're not listening to things you shouldn't be. Are you watching the right stuff? Should you be watching that sort of thing? You need to think about what you're watching. But then it comes back to trust. Nowadays, with devices in bedrooms, you cannot control everything people no. do unless you take it off them. So in that case, you have to build the trust early and, and, the, and the boundaries and the respect early. And the expectations. They know what we expect and they also know what we see as right and wrong as well. So, yeah. Um, and, and also, it's like with their own siblings. Um, it's fair to say that if, if you know, something happened, you know, uh, um, they would know that they would you know, disappoint their siblings' expectations as well. Mm. So, it, you know, so far, you know, Sorry. thank thank the Lord, everything's been good so far. Yeah, good. yeah, mm. yeah. Yeah. No, cool. Can we move on to a slightly different topic? Um, so building faith in your family. You know, and your teenagers. I mean, we're we're all Christadelphians here. Um, you know, we we have a strong faith that says, you know, I, well, I I want my children to grow up to know to know God and to love Him with all their heart. Um, what what are your what are your thoughts on bringing up teens in particular to to grow to have that faith to you know to to take on that that family faith that you guys I know you guys have got strongly. Well, that's it, it's fair to say, Robert. That's really the ultimate goal, isn't it? To bring your kids into a love yeah. of the Lord. That that that's what we're we're aiming for. We want to see them in the kingdom, all of that sort of thing. Sadly, you know, when they get older, doesn't always happen for for whatever reason. But that's that's the goal you want to have. So, um, as I said um, a bit before, what we try and do is we try and show them that initially that. Um, well, we've tried to show them that the truth is important to us, and so we attend everything, you know, um, Sundays to the meeting, when, uh, Thursday night here down in Riverton to the Bible classes, and and, and we made a point of, of, of taking them to the um, Bible schools and, um, you know, so that they would develop good friendship bases right throughout the country, you know. Yeah. Taking them to the Bible schools was very important for us. Um, we've then the Deep South. And um, they needed to learn that the world was wider and that there were other people who thought the same way we did about the truth. So going to the Bible schools gave them that grounding. I was talking to Richard about it the other day. I actually um, asked him a couple of these questions and thought, uh, what he thought. Um, and he said going to the Bible schools was the best thing he could we could have done. He And, and then to the youth conferences, taking to the youth conferences and encouraging those sort of things. Over here, um, there's a, a reasonable size group of young people not a lot necessarily in the older kids age group and um, so they didn't necessarily develop a lot of friends down here that that, that could help them into the into the um, meet into the kingdom so mm -hmm. going to the Bible schools was huge and he said to me that that even having three or four friends it didn't matter where they were in the world um, when they met up at youth conferences or met up at Bible schools it was like they hadn't seen each other they, they'd, they'd not had any time away and it was just brilliant for them mm. yeah um, yeah from a faith point of view, um, don't. Uh, there were some some small things that we think are fairly important. One is, don't allow them to make the choice not to come. 
encourage them as much as possible to be there. So homework, well, they're often on their phones, they're often on playing or doing whatever they want to do, and then suddenly they don't want to go to Bible class because they've got homework to do. Well, that's your problem. You have to organise that yourself. You need to be at Bible class. So um, we tended so to Bible class ask is priority. Pardon? So Bible class is priority then. Bible class was the priority. Yeah, Meeting was the priority. Yeah. Sunday school was the priority. Youth, youth, youth group was the priority. Yes, youth circle yeah. was the priority. So those were the priorities. Um, one other thing we would never um, have done ourselves is that we would never use going to an ecclesial event as a punishment. So you can't go because you've been naughty. Yep. Um, it's always where well, you will be going. And, and we will deal with your naughtiness later on. Um, but that's, that's what we're going to do. Um, so so that, they, that was huge for us was the, the Bible schools. And the other thing that we did all the time was we talked about what we believed. And a lot of that was around critical thinking. So um, some of you may know that for a while I was very heavily involved with theistic evolution, for example. So I would go through and and read up a lot of stuff. And then I would discuss that with the children. I'd say to them, have you read? Have you thought? What do you think about this? And so they learned a lot of what I was thinking. Sometimes they'd be interested, sometimes not so interested, but they got to hear it anyway. And, um, um, and so we would discuss all these things and I'd ask them what they thought. And um, to think about it. Yeah, you know? and to see what they, they critically could think about stuff yeah. like that. So they learned to critically think and then they came to the conclusion often themselves that the Bible made more sense. Yeah. yeah. And the other yeah, thing is true. developing friendship bases um, as much as possible in the meeting, if they can. Uh, you are who your friends are, this is what I was saying to you the other day. Um, yeah. Friendships are really, really important. If, if your kids, um, if all of their friends are at school, and if, especially if you've got the, you know, uh, the wrong kind of friends, if they're into drugs and drink and all of that sort of thing, you're going to struggle. You're going to struggle big time. So it's really important as much as possible to um, try and encourage their friendship bases to stay within the ecclesia if possible. And as, as, as we said, especially nowadays with um, the likes of, you know, all the electronic media communications, Facebook, you know, you name it, it's all there, WhatsApp. They can keep in touch with people fairly easily all over New Zealand that they meet at Bible schools and, and keep their friendships up that way as well. So mm. we believe that's important. And as a, another consideration on that, it's not just about what your friends can do for you. That was hugely on our list as well. It's what you can do for other people. Yeah. So you need to look out for the other younger and older members of the meeting. You need to make sure you talk to whatever age group you can. You need to look out for those who are unsettled or unhappy or or feeling feeling out of things and you need to include them in as much as you possibly can i mean that that's a, a learning process and we don't always get that right but if you're thinking about other people you're not constantly thinking about yourself yeah um takes a lot of practice but but yeah it's just important as having friends as being a friend mm. yeah definitely um just just recently with all of this um you know go to meetings slash um you know, um, Facebook, and stuff. Type of yeah. things that we've been doing. Um, you'll get into a, a situation where you've got a lot of young people in our CYC, and, and it gets a wee bit clicky. You know that the ones that talk a lot talk a lot, and <laughs> and and chat amongst themselves, and then you'll see perhaps the less um, more introverted types just sit in the background and watch on. And and um, we've said it's quite important to the kids, um, to teenagers that. Uh, to our kids at least, that they try and include or mention or talk to, you know, some of the younger ones, some of the ones that are less likely to, um, you know, to, be, to, to talk or, or, or they're a bit shy to speak into the microphone sort of thing. Yeah, that's cool. And, and I, hope, I, hope, I hope if there's any teenagers listening, you take note of that. <laughs> At CYC on Saturday, make sure you talk to people who who are look, who are looking a little bit left out. Yeah, to make the time and effort. If your kids are talk, thinking about other people and trying to to be good yeah. friends, then then they will be best friends themselves, and they are friends. And and the other thing, of course, is um is you have to be honest with your children. Don't try and make a rosy picture of what the meeting is like or what the world is like because when they hit bad stuff, they won't cope so well with it. They've got to understand that humans are humans and we all make mistakes. You've got to sympathise when they're going through a bad spot with a friend and then help them through it so that they can come out the other side and still be positive. 
Um, but you don't whitewash it or try to pretend that the ecclesial world is perfect because it, it isn't. Yeah. And, and and the, the fact is that there are also winners and losers in life, you know. Um, some people are going to appear to do better than other people and, you know, people have different capabilities as well. So, you know, um, you try and bring them up understanding that, you know, if you do the best that you can, that's what God wants of you, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so just before we turn it over to um, questions, just can we touch on briefly on what you've done with your family to encourage enjoyment of Bible reading? Yeah. Oh, we beat them. <laughs> <laughs> you asked you ask this one last week. Um, Bible readings are, are always, if you do it too long with your kids, they'll get bored stiff. Um, you've got to try and balance things how, how the way that you can and our our family here is it's more difficult now we don't have um the ease of, of young teenagers where they just come home and they do their homework and you can just get on with dinner and do things and we've got kids that are out working late at night we've got kids that are um that are out visiting people late at night we have uh, you know into the evening and people that um kids that are working at whatever hours or doing study for polytech um hey, so you, you should tell that story about when you were young um <laughs> When Cindy was, um, th this is an example of what not to do with the readings. Um, when she was young, she would go to a uh, friend's place down in Adelaide and um, on the Sunday afternoon they'd go around and they were pretty close to the Glenelg Beach, um, just over the road from it, in fact. And uh, every time the, um, the father would say, right, let's do the readings, three and a half hours later, on a yeah. beautiful day, on Sunday afternoon. We'd be itching to go and we weren't going to go. Consequently, they just could have hated. So kind of, kind of put you off doing the readings. So what we found that works for us is, as a combination of things. Um, we'll often uh, you can have audio Bible, so we'll often do two readings in the audio Bible and then sit down and do the third one together. But lately, what we've done because of our varied lifestyles here is um, we've got an app called. Um, you can go onto your your website. And it's just called Bible.com, and you can get the app that's from that onto your phone, and you can set up a group. We set up a group readings for um, most of the people in the house and they can tick off the reading. So it's Robert Roberts' reading chart, set it off at the beginning of the year with the group. They read it. Sometimes they'll listen to it on their way to, to Polytech or they'll listen to it on the way to work. They've mostly kept up to it. You can ask questions on, on, the, on the chats as well. You've got a, a daily chat area for you to write questions or to make comments, so they'll do that as well. Or we might just say, where are you at the readings and what have you got out of the readings and we'll discuss some of those things. So yeah. that's one way we've found that works for us right at this present moment of time. I just put the link up on the uh, chat thing. So if anyone wants to, to get on there and um, check that out, it'll be well, well worthwhile, I think. I had a look at that this afternoon. It's in the three things, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, it's really good. You've got the different versions and it's all audio. And But setting up a group, it's it's a little finicky in some ways, but it's, it's pretty good to do. It okay. works well. Cool. Oh, thank you so much, both of you. That's been really good. I know we had a whole lot more questions that we were thinking of asking. <laughs> but yeah, what we'll do yeah, now. <laughs> but what, what I think we'll do now is um, I'll get I'll get you to close in prayer, Alvin. And yeah, then sure. after that, we will see if anyone else has got any questions. We'll open it up so people can turn on their mics and turn on their cameras. And um, if anyone's got any questions they want to discuss, um, also if you've got any questions and you want to ask them anonymously, you can stick them in the chat box and just send them to either us or to that's to Robert and Sharon or to, uh, to Robert Clins or to um, J C Brown, and we'll read them out anonymously for you. Doesn't matter who it comes from, we won't tell you. Um, so yeah, if you've got any any questions or anything you want to you want to ask. Um, we'll do that after this, but uh, in the meantime, Elvin's going to close with prayer. Okay, let's pray. Our eternal Father in highest heaven, hallowed be your gracious name. Dear Father, we come to you at this time thankful for the opportunity to be able to come together to discuss your heritage. And Father, our children are a true treasure to us, and it's, it's our desire that they may share the kingdom with us at that time through your grace. Father, we do ask at this time for your help and your guidance. We know we need your help. We need your word. We need all of those things that will help us and guide us 
to direct our children in a way that gives you the glory at all times. Father, we thank you for this. We thank you for the signs of the times that indeed your son is so close to returning. And again, it's our prayer that he may set up that kingdom soon and, and rule from in righteousness and peace from Jerusalem. Father, we thank you once again for this opportunity. And we uh, pray now through your beloved son, the Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. There was a verse I was actually wanting to share, um, which was this one from Ecclesiastes chapter 12, which I think is our reading in a few days' time. Remember your creator in the days of your youth, before the days of trouble come and the years approach when you say, I find no pleasure in them. And I think what you've told us tonight, Alvin and Cindy, is, is how to bring up a teenager in particular so that they do come to know God, to remember him in the days of their youth, and to find pleasure in remembering him. And um, so, yeah, thank you so much for that. That's really great. Pleasure. Pleasure. As I said, um, we're not experts. We, you know. Um, we just putter along in our We just chug along. We make plenty of mistakes, and you will make plenty of mistakes on the way through. Don't worry about that. Yeah. Children can generate those mistakes uh, as yeah. well. Yeah. We, we, we've yeah. heard them all. We've discovered the sun. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's a great humbler in a lot of cases, you know. Yeah. Um, any uh, questions from anyone? People turn on their um, turn on could, cameras. Feel free to turn on your cameras yeah. and your microphones. And um, a whole lot of people there. I see Gordon Mudge there. I'm sure he's got some good advice. Um, who else we got? Dan. Sam Bailey, Dan and Beth. Dan and Beth's got lots of good learnings, no doubt. Hello, Samantha and Matt. <laughs> they heard you. <laughs> How are you going, Lewis? All good to see us. You're going to join in now to answer no. all questions. Just surprisingly, my daughter walks in right when it finishes. Mm -hmm. Sneaking suspicion she might have been listening in somewhere. Never mind. I don't recommend listening to your parents do a talk on you. It's not very pleasant. Look, you're all turning up. What a surprise. You put your couch against the wall, guys. <laughs> Just to this one's our dreamer just here. Oh, yes. 